my fellow Dream Chasers and Disney fans across the world. Welcome to the latest episode of Kingdom of Isolation, where in times of trouble, why not isolate yourself with the magic of Disney? Today, we are halfway through the 50s as we go through Lady and the Tramp, released in 1955, based on the Happy Dog, Happy Dance, uh, Cynical Dog by Ward Green. Now, of course, it wouldn't be the Kingdom of Isolation without me having a guest on board. He's been here on many an occasion. He's covered Bambi. He's covered Dumbo. He's even covered The Nightmare Before Christmas. He's the man behind the thumbnails from Movies and Milk, Mr. Michael McGorry. Michael, welcome back. I'm happy to be back, Fraser. I seem to be, I've, I've realised that I seem to be your go-to guy when it comes to the talking animal Disney movies. Yeah, I've been on uh, for Dumbo, Bambi, and now Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, I feel like I'm the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, that's a, But uh, at the end of the day, folks, if I if I ever need a slot filled, Michael's my man to go to. Yes. So the spear thing. Yes, uh, say, especially especially with us uh, still being in uh, lockdown for the uh, for the time being. But of, but of course, uh, Sturgeon. At time of recording, folks, we're recording this on February twenty second. Uh, we're expecting an announcement tomorrow, February 23rd, regarding uh, the road back out of lockdown. And hopefully it'll be the last lockdown we have to go through. Hopefully, hopefully so. Yeah. So, Lady in the Tramp, where do we begin with this uh, absolute classic? Let's start from the beginning. Uh, the start of the film. Yeah. Um, so, oh, and uh, before I forget... Spoiler alert in place if you haven't seen it yet. It is, oh, it is of course, on Disney Plus, as with, uh, oh, um, as with uh, the films that I have already uh, discussed, apart from Make My Music, which I already, um, which I already somewhat uh, covered. Because uh, Make My Music seems to be the only one that isn't actually on Disney Plus. Now, I'm not sure why that's, um, why that's the case. But uh, hopefully, hopefully that gets uh, rectified at some point. Um, Later, later down the road. So yes, um, so I've got I've got my notes in front of me. So here we go. So a staple for the films at the time. You have the choir singing over the opening credits, and you've you and uh, the stills. We're in, we we get introduced somewhat uh, by the stills of uh, some of the characters that we are going to be um, introduced to. Uh, and you've got the score and the songs done by. Oliver Wallace, who did the score, and Peggy Lee and uh, Sonny Burke, who did um, the songs. Uh, Peggy Lee, especially, we'll uh, we'll go into a bit more detail regarding her at some point. And interestingly enough, uh, I covered it in I covered it in my last episode of uh, of this series uh, covering Peter Pan. Uh, this is the first film from Walt Disney Animation Studios uh, to be distributed by the uh, Buena Vista. Uh, pictures uh, right. company um, since after they uh, took over from RKO Radio Pictures, their last film was of course uh, Peter Pan and this uh, and on the poster of this film, like the original poster, my word I say, it just shows how far we've come as far as uh, movie posters are concerned yeah. but um, on the poster it says first animated film to be Done in cinema vision, which is basically uh, basically the uh, the fancy term for widescreen. First animated Disney film in widescreen, but it definitely wouldn't be the last for this era, especially. Yeah, I realised that in my most recent viewing that the that I noticed that it wasn't in a a four by three aspect ratio. I'm not a an aspect yeah. ratio connoisseur, but uh, yeah. four by this was the first one that was in widescreen and. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely tell that they put a lot of hard work into the animation in this one. Yeah, um, but if, they took full advantage of it. But of, but of course, there was there were some. I um, said so there were some uh, cinemas uh, back then that didn't have the uh, uh, widescreen capabilities that uh, that they do now. So, the, so effectively, what they they had to do was they had to. Uh, they had they did it in they did it in uh, the cinema vision, and they also had to do it in the standard. Um, 4-3 aspect okay. ratio as well for um for the others and um so yeah the, so then less little um behind the scenes factoid for that one and um, and then once the opening credits are out of the way accompanied beautifully by the theme of the film bella note mm-hmm. 
and, and actually, while I'm on the subject of that song, uh, I was actually planning on covering this for Valentine's Day, but uh, there was uh, there was a few delays getting uh, some of the other uh, films uh, covered. But um, you could call this a belated Valentine's Day present for all the uh, lovers out there. Yeah. So uh, opening credits are out of the way. And uh, there's a quote by Josh Billings dedicating the film to all the ladies and tramps around the world. Yeah. Yeah. I know I was watching this film with my, my little dog, Betsy. Uh, probably just heard her barking there. Ah, yeah. quite <laughs> <laughs> um, probably heard her name and think, what's this? I need attention. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was watching it with her and I was like, oh, Betsy, this film's for you. And then obviously <laughs> I told you, um, during the middle of the film, she ended up ripping a hole in the carpet. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, came to a, I came to a small scene that um, uh, we'll, we'll, get we'll, later. we'll get to uh, very, very shortly. Uh, so Christmas Eve, 1909 in a, in a Midwestern town, uh, visually inspired by Disney's actual hometown of... Marceline, Missouri. All right, okay, I didn't know that. So, so yeah, um, let's see, uh, cast, there we go. Uh, we've got uh, Jim Deere, voiced by Lee Miller, giving his uh, his wife, Darling, voiced by Peggy Lee. So, mm -hmm. so I said, oh, that'd be a very, that would have been a very pay tasty paycheck for, um, for Peggy, yeah, voicing Peggy one Miller. of the characters and doing the songs for the film. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so, yes. So, with that being said, uh, they, uh, Jim gives Darling um, a present, and lo and behold, it's a Cocker Spaniel, and they end up naming her Lady. Mm -hmm. Very original name. That was <laughs> one of the working names for Betsy back uh, when we oh. first got her. Uh, I will say that the first couple of scenes in this movie, if you ever plan on getting a puppy, watch the first opening minutes of this film, and you'll you come to see some of the, the trials and tribulations that come with getting a, a little puppy. Um, Indeed. <laughs> yeah. they, will, they will get on your nerves occasionally, but you love them. <laughs> you love them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, where to next? Yeah. Um, I'll say, I'll say the, the opening, the opening, uh, the song over the, the opening scene, it definitely, it definitely gives you that uh, Christmassy feel. Mm hmm. They yeah. call it a Christmas film. Yeah, but um, once they've got everything uh, set up for, uh, once they've got everything set up for Lady, uh, uh, I'm, as we're led to assume this will be like uh, her first night sleeping with mm -hmm. uh, the family. And um, and Jim's just like, yeah, she'll go right to sleep. And I have put it, I was like, uh, I've, often, I've often brought up the fact that uh, some of the little... Um, uh, things that I like to put into my notes, uh, and this is one of them. I'm just like, um, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> and then in comes the mischievous music of um, Lady trying to get the get the attention of uh, Jim and Darling. And oh boy, <laughs> because he, you, you can just you, you can tell the. Um, you can tell they put a lot of heart into the score for this particular uh, scene, especially. And then it all escalates to the point where Jim's just like, fine, you can sleep with us, but just for tonight. But then six months later, Lady's she's still, still sleeping on she's still sleeping on the bed with them every night. <laughs> oh, we sweetheart. We sweetheart. Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> And then we cut to that morning where they're having breakfast. Yes. And one of my favourite visual gags comes into play where I think Jim says something along the lines of, ever since we got Lady, the headlines seem to have been trimmed down or something. Yes, uh, the newspaper having uh, some... Uh, <laughs> I was like, like uh, a, a chunk out of the front page taken out. Yes, yes, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that's even despite the fact that Jim does say before Lady gets the paper that uh, he doesn't like Sundays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, there's a little bit of foreshadowing during this part as well. 
uh, a bit of foreshadowing for the end of the film where Lady encounters the rat for the first time. Yes. Mm -hmm. like, and, like, and like I say, this is, this is foreshadowing for the end of the film. Essentially the main antagonist of the film, pretty much the rat, sort of yeah. the final conflict of the film. Yeah, so. uh, if, yeah if, even, even, though we don't, even though we don't see the rat for um, mm -hmm. the majority of the film afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and then we'll, uh, I'll go into a bit more, I'll go into a bit more about the uh, voice cast, uh, voice cast, let's see, we've got uh, Barbara Luddy, who uh, voices uh, Lady, mm -hmm. and then she, as they, we've established that she's um, friends with Jock, voiced by Bill Thompson, and uh, Trusty, voiced by Bill uh, Balcombe, uh, Trusty is a bloodhound, and Jock is a Scottish terrier. Now, yep. uh, very Scottish, <laughs> very yeah. Scottish terrier. <laughs> yeah. No. Now, now, if um, now, for those in Scotland, especially folks, bear with me on this one. Listening to Jock singing when he's burying one of his many, 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 many bones that he's collected over his time. Do you not think the song he's singing sounds very similar? To Loch Lomond. Yes, yes, no, he does. He, he sort of makes his own little cover of it. Um, yeah, yeah. Some people might find it offensive. Some people might find the Scottish representation offensive, but yeah. I like it. It's very charming. I don't know if the actor himself is Scottish. I've got a feeling he plays someone else in the film. I think I heard his voice a couple of times uh, over the course of the movie. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I think he done a very good Scottish accent. Um, yeah, but um, I think I think I say I say to us it it sounded um a bit like um I say, I say especially especially the like the the last line mm -hmm. uh, of of the song I say and I and I thought I say and it got me thinking wait a minute I have I heard this somewhere before uh, yeah. and I had to rewind it and. And lo and behold, I was right. It did have similarities to Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and of course, for the sports fans out there, Loch Lomond, a staple for Scotland games, especially be it in rugby or in uh, football. Oh boy, talking of which, oh, oh Sco Scotland and England in the game. same group for the European Championships this summer. <sighs> if we're able to go to sporting events come the summer. Oh, you'll be there. You'll be there with live coverage. <laughs> what a what a sight that's gonna be! I say, I mean, Hamden Park especially. I mean, I was actually at Hamden Park back in uh, 2014. My word, that feels like a lifetime ago oh, for the Commonwealth Games. And oh, all right, yeah, and oh, Hamden Raw. My goodness me, what what an atmosphere it was. <laughs> yeah, I've never went to Hamden. I'm not a huge sports fan, but it's a place I've always wanted to visit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe maybe they do stadium to us for all we know. So um, maybe we can try and get something sorted regarding that later down the road once we're able to again. Yeah, um, and uh, of course, uh, Joke does bring up to trust uh, to Lady, but of course, not mentioning it to Trusty until later on in the film that uh, Trusty has lost his uh, sense of smell. But uh, but hey, persist, but hey. Trusty's very persistent. You can't, you can't fault him. No, no. <laughs> but um, then, uh, oh boy. Um, then later on after that, um, Jim and uh, Darling, they say their life's uh, complete. Their life's complete uh, once they've, now that they've got Lady. But lo and behold, they decide to have a baby later on in the film. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> famous and, last ones again. Yeah, <laughs> and then we get introduced to the other main protagonist of the film. We have got Tramp, voiced by Larry Roberts. Oh, oh wow! I mean, I mean, very charming. He, <laughs> I mean. You can see why he gets the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we'll we'll, we'll touch. <laughs> yes, uh, I was like caring and positive right out of the gate. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, just just that smile on his face. I mean, it it just makes your day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
one thing I'd like to mention is the earlier movies in Disney's catalogue, I would mm-hmm. say that the weak spot in like Snow White and Cinderella has always been that sort of main romantic chemistry. Whereas yeah. I feel like Lady and the Tramp was the first time where they managed to perfect that. Both Lady and Tramp are very likable and their chemistry with each other is also fire. But I guess we'll get to that later when they do eventually meet. Yeah. But um, as I end, uh, off and off and off he goes uh, for breakfast and he's uh, he stops at uh, Tony's. And wow. Uh, yeah, this definitely hints at... Um, Okay, uh, we definitely get hints of that iconic scene. You all yeah. know what one we're on about, folks. Even if you yeah. haven't seen it, I think you yeah. know of the image. Yeah, we, I think we get hints of that iconic scene. T- um, um, it's bear with me. Yes, there we go. Uh, voices, um, so one of the voice actors, uh, Bill Thompson, we mentioned earlier, uh, he voices Joe, who is Tony's assistant at the, uh, the restaurant, which, um, which you did uh, bring up just a couple of moments ago. <laughs> and so he's just, you see, sing, I see, just humming the tune to Bella Note. That's, like I said, that's, like that, that's one of the hints to that iconic scene later on in the film. And uh, just another bone for Tramp for his breakfast. Yummy, tasty. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't get the appeal of bones. They don't really look like the, <laughs> there's yeah. much taste in them, but there you go. Yeah. That's, that's dogs for you. They'll take yeah. what they get. Yeah. And uh, we also get hints of the, uh, the dog pound later on yes. in the film. Because we yes. get... Um, because we get, because we get uh, bull, well, who's a well, bulldog, mm-hmm. and the uh, whereabouts, and also, and also uh, Peg, who's the um, uh, poodle, I believe it is. I might, I might be wrong on that one. I might be wrong on that one. I'm pretty sure it's a poodle. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, th- so they're in the um, the dog pound uh, carriage, and uh, Tramp decides, uh, let's have a little bit of fun, shall we? Yes. Uh, manages to unhook the um, the door. Bull and Peg manage to escape, and Tramp decides to have a little bit of fun with the um, uh, the dog catcher, just causing havoc. <laughs> oh boy. But again, very likable protagonist. Yeah, it's like very playful at this point. Yes, yes. Yeah. Especially given where we we see the pound later on in the film. Yes, it is very playful and very funny. But there's a indeed a dark uh, side. Yeah, but um, but then but then we cut back to Lady once all the uh, mischief is out of the way, and uh, interestingly, she actually takes the blame. For uh, the darlings expecting uh, their baby boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, why she, why she takes the blame? Uh, um, why she takes the blame? I'm still trying to I'm still trying to piece together why she uh, she, she takes the blame. Uh, effectively playing the victim in, in mm-hmm. all this, because um, c- because at this point, uh, folks, she's not getting as much attention as she used to, mm-hmm. and. Yeah. And if anything, um, Darling and Jim, they are they're more fo- they're mo- they're putting more focus on getting ready for um, their baby's arrival. Yeah. And um, and the and some of the transitions during this point in the film very very well done on the animation mm-hmm. uh, side of things because um because you get Lady in. Uh, like like she's she's hiding in a corner and then it trans it transitions straight back to uh being outside mm-hmm. i say incredible how they managed to do that and of course th- and of course this is back in the 50s folks no computers at the time yeah yeah um like i said they take full advantage of their widescreen capabilities i think 
this is where they really started to take focus on their compositions and stuff. Like I said, my favourite gag in the film is that newspaper headline and ladies' yeah. faces in the hole. Um, yeah, no, they take <laughs> they yeah. take full advantage of of the the developing um, the developing uh, technical side of animation. I. I'll say yeah. that. <laughs> so the um, and then and then we get the um, then we get the next song uh, in the film, which is um, which is um, it's like quite a long way away from the um, from the first couple of songs that we had at the, uh, at the start. Uh, what is a baby? Which uh, and the music at the, during this scene and throughout the song definitely 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 has that whimsical sense of mystery like it, it has it has that sense of mystery about it like uh, and slightly it, and, eerie but yeah. optimistic yeah but um but then but then but then that uh, mystery side uh, fades away when we actually see uh, the baby for uh, for the first time yep ladies introduced to the baby and it's it's a very touching very heartwarming moment uh, the whole family's there together to embrace this new arrival. And, yeah. Yep. Very nice, mm-hmm. very wholesome scene, mm-hmm. which is then <laughs> obliterated in the next scene where Jim and um, his wife just decide, you know what, let's go on holiday or something. I don't know if it's a business trip or if it's a holiday or something, but they decide yeah. to leave for a couple of days after they've just had this newborn baby. And it's like... Yeah going to maybe stay for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two. Yeah. Um, but I guess and, that's what they've done back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And this, and, uh, and this is where we get, and this is where we get to see more of uh, Aunt Sarah, voiced by a longtime collaborator in the voice acting department, Verna Felton. She's done, I think she was in uh, Dumbo, she was in Cinderella, she was in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, she's, been, she's been in a, she's been in a whole range of um disney projects uh back then especially on the animated mm-hmm. side of things and uh, something i've just found out just now she was also the voice of uh albeit for four episodes she was also the voice of pearl slag hoopy uh slag hoople i think uh from the flintstones all right that's awfully good that's awfully yeah. good uh question regarding her uh is she seeing dumbo who yeah. did she play in Dumbo? Was she one of the she, she was one actually, of those elephants? She was actually the matriarch, believe it or not. <sighs> right. Okay. You can and uh, she's very good at playing a detestable villainess. Um, yeah, especially in this. <laughs> yeah, I think, but she also she also did the fairy godmother in um, in Cinderella. So she she has great range, and uh, mm. you you can you can hear our thoughts on there. Uh, on Dumble in the Kingdom of Isolation playlist, top right of your screens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but like I say, she's, she's got incredible range, being able to play these uh, kind characters like um, Fairy Godmother, like I've mentioned, and also Flora in uh, Sleeping Beauty, which will be my next episode, ladies and gentlemen. So stay tuned for that. And also, um, and also these detestable uh, characters such as the Queen of Hearts, the Matriarch, and um, of course, Aunt Sarah here. And oh, this next part in let's see, this this these next couple of parts are a little bit problematic. Not just as far as. Um, how the story progresses is concerned because because uh, Aunt Sarah she's just you just like why does she why does she not like Lady so much mm-hmm. and then oh boy it's revealed she's a cat lady yeah not just oh. any cats <laughs> Siamese cats um, and and they'll remind you of that fact <laughs> yeah I was about to uh, say yeah which brings me on to this next point. Could they give a more stereotypical introduction to these cats? The gong, the oriental music, the, dare I say, exaggerated Asian 
accents. Mm-hmm. It's it's not aged well. Yeah. However, it's not the worst Asian stereotype that Disney has given to cats. Uh, remember Aristocats? Oh, <laughs> Shanghai, Hong Kong, egg for young, fortune cookie, always wrong. Oh boy, yeah, that's problematic. Uh, we'll we'll cover the Aristocats later on down the road. Yeah. So. So they're not the only racist cats in Disney's hey. filmography. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what it is about cats in particular, but yeah, I was like, I'll say it's, I'll say it's, I'll say, and and it's one of the reasons why a lot of a lot of those films, especially, have this disclaimer about the uh, the stereotypes. <laughs> they had, yeah. I say, they weren't okay then, and they weren't, and they aren't okay now. Yeah, I say, I say, de- I say, de- I say, I wouldn't say it was as problematic as peter pan yes yes Mm -hmm. but it's still somewhat uncomfortable today Mm -hmm. i know they're only really playing up to the stereotypes in that one song but then once the i am siamese song finishes it just sort of becomes normal cats playing about with dogs uh causing mischief um yeah so yeah and then once all the carnage is um, once all the carnage is out of the way, um, as I say, the Siamese cats they somehow manage to get Lady in trouble to the point where she ends up having to have a muzzle over her mouth. Oh, oh. I hate seeing a dog in a muzzle. I hate it. It's it's not it's not a pretty sight, folks. Oh, but um, the but film then... does get more tra- traumatic later on. But <laughs> we'll get to that again. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speak, speaking of which, there's a there's, there's some danger at this point where um, Lady manages to, es- to escape from Anne Sarah, mercifully, for now at least. Uh, and she's actually chased by uh, some some alley dogs. And something I no- something I noticed. Uh, let's see. Uh, when, when we covered Bambi, uh, you, you remember the uh, the whole scene where you've got that pack of dogs trying to get yes. uh, trying to hunt down uh, Feline and Bambi. Mm-hmm. The box especially, keep that in mind, the box especially, it's the same box from that scene that I used at this point in the film. All right. Didn't know that. Um, there was one particular sound effect that I remember from a, a specific video game, but I guess we'll get to that later as well. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Yes, and don't worry, folks, I do have that in my notes. I do have that yeah. in my notes. Yeah. So, uh, next, we... The music at this point uh, where Lady's being chased by these alley dogs, uh, it, definitely, it definitely heightens the danger that Lady is in at this point. And then, and then in comes her knight in shining armor, Tramp, and... Oh, I think, uh, and then... It's just the music just stops, mm-hmm. and it's just this face-off. Yes, and yes, it doesn't it, shy away. It the music just stopping at that point. It adds to the tension, and it it works in its favor. Yes, yes, um, doesn't shy away from the the brutal dog fight. Um, yeah, so th- th- those are the sort of scenes that definitely wouldn't be okay in Disney films today. Yes. I mean, I've not seen the remake of Lady and the Tramp, but I don't imagine they will have done nearly half of the stuff that they do in this movie. Yeah. Um, take as many chances. Yeah. Um, and uh, when it comes, uh, when, when, I, when I do get around to covering the live action remakes, folks, um, we'll, um, we'll get to it. We'll get we'll get to that eventually because um, I've said it I've said it numerous times especially in one of my channel updates uh, a few months back that this Kingdom of Isolation it's a long term project it ain't going anywhere if a Disney film is released you can guarantee it's going to be covered on here and also in a uh, spoiler free review on mm-hmm. the on the channel as well because because uh, that's the thing with um, me trying to do film reviews these days I'm tr- I'm trying to keep them as spoiler free um, as possible until I cover them on an, on the, on a show like this. Mm-hmm. Now, um, now, Tramp saves the day. Lady, very thankful for that. Um, tries to... Um, and then they need to work out how to get the muzzle off, mm-hmm. Lady. And that's when we come across the zoo. Mm-hmm. And 
just uh, tr- trying to go around the various uh, animals, uh, mm-hmm. going through them in alphabetical order, interestingly. I didn't clock that. Yeah. First animal they go to, uh, well, one of the first animals they go to, let's say they go to apes, uh, but they decide against that. Tramps mm-hmm. words, too close to humans. And then they end up going to uh, an alligator. Not exactly one of not, that wouldn't be one of my first choices to go to as far as to trying to get the uh, the muzzle off. No. You know I mean? <laughs> but you know I mean? come on, Tramp. A, have you seen how big that mouth is? And B, are you trying to kill Lady at this point? <laughs> but but yeah, uh, yes. Then we see a, then we see a hyena just laughing absolutely hysterically. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, I'm actually um, um, uh, was it? I'm actually gonna. I'm actually gonna put it in uh, once I get through the editing process. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's uh, roll the footage. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah that hyena laugh is the same laugh that is used by ripperoo in crash bandicoot yes one of my favorite games growing up as a child so even back as a a young kid i was able to clock it i'm like i've I've heard that hyena laugh before yeah i i I did as well that's um but my goodness me oh i was like the first Crash Bandicoot game, so like the original mm-hmm. port of the first Crash Bandicoot game on the yeah. original PlayStation. Best startup screen ever, folks, and I am not yes. going to change my mind on that one. Yes. Because the thing I always bring up regarding the, the PlayStation startup screen, I say it's just um, when that Sony logo comes up, I, I, say, I keep picturing myself rising up, I say, even as a kid. Mm-hmm. I say just yeah. rising up through the floor into like a gaming arena, and then the PlayStation logo comes up, spotlight on me, and it's game on. I say every time I see that PlayStation startup screen, mm-hmm. I am instantly transported back to that mindset. That in, yeah, mm-hmm. just if all only- sort of transports you into the game, kind of it's sort of like a yes, and yeah. that's. And that's one of the reasons why it's my favorite startup screen of all time. Yeah, I can yeah. definitely understand. Um, do they use the same sound effect in the recent Crash Bandicoot redo? I've I've not played. Oh, in in the Insane trilogy. Yeah, I've not I've not played the Insane tri- <laughs> Insane trilogy. Um, but do they okay. use the same laugh sound effect for Ripper Roo? Yeah, um, anyway, then they get to a beaver who is uh, working on his um, working on his dam. Uh, but Mike, but uh, <laughs> yeah, trying to get the beaver's attention, uh, he's just like, uh, Yeah, don't distract me, I'm just uh, going about my business. And then, tr- and then, Tramp, did you have to yell so loudly? <laughs> but I suppose that is one way to get someone's attention. Yeah, yeah. And then he just sort of calms down a bit and then does his sort of car salesman shtick to sort of <laughs> sell off ah, this yes. muzzle that's on Lady. Yeah. Um, and what does he what does he refer to it as again? What does he what does he say it's called? It's a uh, a, a log a log puller or a something log puller, or yeah yeah mm, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and and the log puller actually works, albeit yes. in comedic circumstances. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks ever. <laughs> Works well. I say, I say that. I say, I say, I say, I would, I would show clips of these particular moments in this, um, in this series. But uh, we know how protective Disney can be with their, yes. with their, 
um, their content because they're very, very protective as far as copyright is concerned. But um, but uh, but but amazingly, uh, when I when I put together the when I managed to edit together the Nightmare Before Christmas episode, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I managed to yeah. get that I managed to get that clip that you mentioned of um, the musical sting of yeah. um, Jack uh, revealing himself. Yes, hello, yeah. Oogie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, I'll say, I mean, I'll say, I mean. I mean, even if I managed to get a clip as short as that, mm -hmm. I should be okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it depends on the brevity, I think. I, I don't know yeah. what YouTube... <laughs> what, yeah. what the problem with YouTube's copyright system is, I mean, yeah. my most recent video, a video, a film reaction to oh. a specific film that I'll probably not discuss here because this is a, yeah. a family-friendly show. Probably, uh, for the, probably for the best, folks. Probably for the best. Uh, yeah. But that video hasn't been picked up by copyright, so I, I don't know. What, yeah, it just I, depends. I, I, th I think I think it must be a case of um, that um, say that YouTube, especially, are actually trying to be a bit trying to be more um, lenient mm -hmm. in a sense as far as um, movie clips being okay. shown are concerned. That uh, that if if we're using them for uh, purposes of uh, doing so doing something like this or doing a reaction, mm -hmm. it should fall under fair use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so like I said, if, if I do manage to get if I do manage to get some small clips of the film here and there throughout throughout this, uh, I should be okay. I mean, I mean even if they're just like f even if they're like five seconds long, if that, but um, mm -hmm. should be okay. Should be okay. But yeah. um, am I am I actually, am I actually give that a go? See see okay. see how it goes. See how it goes. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Once the muzzle's off, um, a, so like I say, let's say, the log puller works, and it and it actually completes the dam. Like I say, albeit in comedic <laughs> circumstances. Um, my good, my <laughs> like, it looks swell, <laughs> and he has water coming out like a spout. <laughs> I uh, from these these two front teeth, I yeah, but um, then then we transition into the evening. And the music, mm -hmm. yeah, let's see, uh, definitely hinting at Bellanote. And Lady and Trump have their first date together. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? I mean, dare I say, what happened to those simpler times when you just ate? Let's see, where was well, it? Especially in this current climate, where yeah. <laughs> you were actually you were actually able to go out and. Have a, have a date night with somebody. I mean, mm -hmm. what, I mean, what what happened to those? What happened to those no, days? I, hopefully, no. hopefully not. Hopefully not too much longer before I, before we're able to do that again. Yeah. Um. Was it, um. Was it, uh, earlier at Tony's restaurant, we were we were we were we actually we only saw Joe, interestingly. But yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, here, this is when we get introduced to the boss himself, Tony. Back Tony. Yes. 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 Um. Voiced by George uh, Givot or Givot, however you, however you pronounce that. <clears throat> oh, so is he actually Italian then? Is um, an Italian man. Oh, George was actually a Russian-born American comedian and actor on Broadway. All right. Okay. Huh. That's good. I mean, that's, that's a very good Italian accent. Uh, so I, I was about to say that they must have done a they must have done a fair bit of work on the um, on the dialect side mm -hmm. of things behind the scenes, especially. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, ma I mean, massive hats off, massive hats off to them for um, for doing that. Uh, it's um, they say the they <laughs> they Tony Cat Tony does come across as a little bit aggressive towards um, towards his uh, his assistant yes. Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, He's just like, he's just like, uh, uh, no, you, you do not give, you do not give uh, this, uh, this a uh, wonderful lady a I say this, this is a special night for them. Yes, yes, and then we get to that iconic <sighs> scene. I mean, very romantic, very, very yeah. good. Um, and this is, again, and, th and this is one of the reasons why we really wanted to cover this for Valentine's Day. Yeah. So, but, but, I, but I say that, that's just, that's just, that's just the cards that we were, that's just the cards yeah. that we were dealt. <laughs> Because, you know, when life gives you lemons and all that, but yeah, I was like, I mean, the only the only word I can use to describe that scene is just 
beautiful. Yeah, that's that's the only yeah. word I can really use to describe that scene. I say, I say, I mean, yes, it's been yes, it's been parodied on a number of occasions. Oh yes, but yes. I say, uh, I say, I say, even even reference during uh, during an episode of uh, Glee for all the uh, for all the Gleeks out there. <laughs> well, actually, talking of which, uh, November twenty, uh, November, February twenty second. Star content gets added tomorrow on Disney Plus, February twenty third. It does. Mm-hmm. I've just realised Glee's coming to Disney Plus. <laughs> I've not seen the show myself, but uh, given how hyped you are about it, I might give it a go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I will say this regarding Glee. It's, um, it's, it was definitely catered towards our sort of uh, generation, tackling all the, yeah. the major social issues that we're still dealing with today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it's one of the reasons why I feel it worked for the demographic it was aiming for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Aye, I'll give it a go. I'm I'm starting to get into my modern day musicals, so yeah, definitely I'll give me um, a chance. I say, I say, I say, Glee, Glee is on Netflix here in the UK as well. Um, mm. but um, but I say, but I wouldn't be too surprised if it actually gets removed from Netflix to go to, to Disney, uh, Disney Plus. Plus. Yeah. But 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 of course, with with all this new content being added, it's understandable why the, the price um. Uh, the price each month is gonna it's gonna go up, but hey, it's only an extra couple of quid a month. I mean, I mean, I I can I can live with that. Yeah, I had a look at the list of content that's coming out with the star. Uh, yeah, sort of subcategory. And, yeah, yeah I'd like, say it's, it's like, worth a couple of quid. Yeah, absolutely. There there is a lot. I mean, you I mean you've got shows you've got shows like Grey's Anatomy, Lost. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, it's like a lot a lot of the shows from their um a lot of the shows from their Disney's um. TV studios like ABC, for instance, mm-hmm. and I can't believe they're actually getting Deadpool on here. I can't believe they're actually getting Deadpool on Disney Plus. Deadpool and Borat. <laughs> I know those two names stuck out. I'm like, right, okay. On the I mean, same website where you can watch Sleeping Beauty and Marvel movies, you're also going to have Borat and Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and uh, and it and it's no and it's no surprise really that they're gonna that they've uh, that they've actually started implementing the parental guidance uh, yeah. filter mm-hmm. onto the um, yeah. onto the platform. As I mean, I mean, uh, understandable, especially given given the fact that uh, a majority of this content is definitely not going to be kid friendly. Yeah, Family Guy is on it as well, isn't it? Oh yeah, Family Guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would. I say, I say, I'll say, I, I, I kind of just gave up with um, Modern Family Guy. But yeah. uh, say, if a classic episode's on, I, I will, I will go mm. and then I, I will watch it. I, say, uh, I mean, Road to, Road to the Multiverse, one of one of my personal favorites. But uh, yes. but one one episode that always has me in stitches is where Peter is obsessed. Oh. Wait. Oh, have you not heard, Michael? No. <laughs> I, I, I had to, I had to, folks. Of course, the, the, the one episode where Peter is obsessed with surfing, but there was actually a campaign, yeah. believe it or not, to get that song to the Christmas number one a, couple, a few years back. Was it? Yeah. It managed to get to number three. Jesus. Yeah, I know. The meme was strong with that one. <laughs> yeah. The the lengths people go to to stop the X Factor, especially back then. Yes. <laughs> getting to Christmas number one. Rage Against Mach- Machine was the first so- was the first um it was like it, it was the first it was the first song to actually break the X Factor right. streak. I mean, mm. I mean, yes, I mean yes, the 2004 winner didn't get the Christmas number one that year because that was of course Band-Aid. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's Band-Aid. I mean, one yeah. of the <laughs> but um but, say, but, say, but apart from that, for four years running, Shane Ward, Leona Lewis, Leon Jackson, and Alexandra Burke all got the Christmas number one. Number one. Mm-hmm. Rage Against Machine broke that streak. Fantastic. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, I mean, I, I wasn't, a, I wasn't a fan of the, I wasn't a fan of the, um, I wasn't a fan of the uh, uh, Rage Against Machine, but, um, but it's, 
it's it's like it's like it's like a lot of things that I didn't like initially. Um, and I like I said I'm just like really why this? Mm-hmm. But then over time it has grown on me to the point where songs like songs like Rage Against the Machine are actually in my gym training playlist. Hopefully, hopefully not too much longer before the gyms open up again. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyway, Lady yes. Trump. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Back to Bella Note. Uh, my yeah. Let's see. I think towards the towards the end of the first half of that, um, see, you you can actually see ladies' eyes glittering, mm-hmm. and and that and that further adds to the beauty of that scene. Yeah, again, a, t- a testament yeah. to the animators. The chemistry just shines through in that scene. Definitely, you definitely tell that they are starting to feel for each other. Um, Indeed, and then, and then, and then. This is probably one of my favorite transitions of the film, mm-hmm. where so you've got you've got all the uh, the banners above uh, the restaurants, and then it transitions to uh, tree branches, effectively in the same sort of composition. Placing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yep. I say, and uh, the the second half, the, I say. Basically the same song, uh, but this time a cappella. Now, mm-hmm. now I, I'm a massive sucker when it comes to not just a cappella music, but also listening to harmonies as well. I always get chills mm-hmm. listening to harmonies. This, 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 a lot this of just, hard work. Yeah, I see. There's just there's just something about the harmonies that just really draws me in and mm-hmm. grabs my attention. And gives you goosebumps. Yes, yeah. yes, goosebumps every time mm-hmm. I listen to harmonies. Mm-hmm. And, and and one of my one of my partic- one of my particular favorites was uh, a, a mashup of um, two songs from like two different musicals. Um, one was um, "You Will Be Found" from Dear Evan Hansen, and "Tonight" from uh, Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Was it a mashup of those two, which was actually done. Which was actually done for the um, uh, March for Our Lives um, initiative, is uh, with right. with with the um, trying to say like um, what's trying to implement um, restrictions on the um, on on the gun laws um, yeah. stateside. But um, I say I say that that mashup is absolutely incredible. Lin Manuel Miranda and Ben Platt. I say Lin Manuel Miranda, Miranda from uh, Hamilton. He's done a couple of Disney projects recently mm-hmm. as well, and uh, Ben Platt, who did um, who was actually the title role in uh, Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. I say the harmonies with those guys, just especially when it comes to the chorus, just uh, spellbinding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um let's say, let's say that scene where they're um Lady and Tramp just continuing their date night. Yeah. The the little love hearts that they put their paw prints in. Yes. The yes. initials especially caught my attention. And I thought, could that be a reference to a couple or something? Because mm-hmm. the initials are JM and E B. Now from what I can gather, uh, I say I don't. I say nothing concrete, nothing. Concrete. From what I can gather, it's J. M. Barry, the author of Peter Pan, and right. and E. B. White. Now, I say, I, I'm trying to remember what E. B. White has um, uh, has written. So I'll just I'll just I'll just get that up relatively quickly. So she has done. She has done a lot of. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, he even. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, of course, of course. I've actually, I've actually got a copy of this book. <laughs> he, uh, he was the author of um, Stuart Little. Ah, oh, I knew yeah. I heard the name before. Yeah, I say he was also, he was also the author of. Um, Charlotte's Web. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Stuart right. Little Day, ladies and gentlemen. June, what was it, 22nd, 21st? I completely forgot. June like, 21st or 22nd. I was like, r- r- round, about, round about then. Uh, and 
I will say this, folks. If we can, if we can, if we can manage to sort something out, granted, we might need to do it over two separate days. Mm -hmm. I can try and get both Stuart Little One and Stuart Little Two reviewed with you. Yes, man, I'm up for it. July twentieth. That's that's when Stuart Little Day is. I've got it on my phone calendar. July twentieth. There we go, folks. So, um, so, so, so we'll need to get the, um, so we'll need to get the, um, so we'll need to get those reviews recorded, um, uh, point, yeah. uh, a, a week or two beforehand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's say, let's say this gives me, let's say having this stuff to look forward to keeps me busy. Uh, as like I say, it gives me stuff to look forward to as well. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, let's say, let's say, let's say JM, Barry, EB White, let's say, I say it's 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 interesting. I say it's interesting that they uh, put uh, two uh, the the initials of two male authors mm. inside that love heart. Well, it, it could be anyone. For anyone that hasn't looked it up, they could just say, "Huck, oh, it's Jim yeah. Morris and Emily Barrett or something." Hey, that hey that hey, that works. <laughs> For yeah. anyone's interpretation, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but but like but like I say, folks, there's there's nothing concrete on the or if anything's been confirmed, nothing concrete. Uh, oh. You made a pun there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That definitely deserves the uh, comedy rim shot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, you didn't um, even know you were making it, son. But I'm always here to call your fun. And that's um. And, 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 that, and, that, and that's what makes them work. I say, so sometimes they just sometimes they just come out of nowhere, and yep. then you just, then you just get. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they have that little romantic yeah. montage. It's yeah. Very touching. I say, yeah, it, I say, it, it is easily at the time one of the best scenes that has ever been animated. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. massive hats off to the animators for for that. Mm -hmm. Very similar to Fantasia, and that it's very in line with the music it's yeah there's not there's not that much dialogue in it it's just the the song combined with animation and it's it's beautiful it's wonderful to look at exactly and that's what makes those sort of scenes work I say, especially mm -hmm. especially with one of my favorite scenes from the Re renaissance era mm -hmm. um with uh, milan the yeah. the whole scene of uh, her taking her dad's place mm -hmm. all the i mean i mean i mean even me at six years old watching that for the very first time i didn't even know what um I didn't even I didn't even know what um storytelling meant or what mm -hmm. or animation um, and yeah all that stuff but I knew back then even mm -hmm. though I didn't know it at the time I knew back then there was something very special about that scene just the mm -hmm. animation the story and the visuals no dialogue throughout that entire scene yeah, yeah. I say it, it is easily one of my favorite Disney scenes of them um, all time okay. which which actually gives me an idea i might later down the road folks i might actually do um my top 10 favorite disney scenes no pressure then given the fact we've got <laughs> we've got about 60 films to choose from uh, <laughs> i will i will do a separate top 10 list for the pixar films when i start doing my pixar mm -hmm. pixar run of them um, uh episodes for this series and speaking of which, whoa, hey, 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 he's he's got the whole he's got the Pixar collection there. Got the whole thing. Got the whole thing. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. I'm, a I'm a Pixar completionist, so yeah. I, I hope to make an appearance on your Pixar. Oh, don't don't <laughs> worry. I will make I will make sure you're there. Don't worry, I'll make sure you're yes. there. I mean, I mean, there aren't as many Pixar films to cover yes. as uh, the mm. uh, the Disney films, but uh, I will still cover all of them because it's sort of like sort of like mm. a sort of, sort yeah. But um, but yeah, um, because 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 we because we're part of that generation that have grown up with effectively every single Pixar film that has come out. As like me, me especially, born in ninety three, yeah. the first Pixar film came out in ninety five. Yeah, I've yeah. been there from the start. Yeah, you saw it. It's an inception. You've grown up with the movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, as, and and the last film that I actually watched to complete to. To officially say I have watched every single Pixar film is um, was uh, the Good Dinosaur. It's probably the probably the most forgettable of the um, yeah. of, of all the Not Pixar the best films. To end on. Yeah, but um, 
So I say, granted, it did come out the same year as uh, Inside Out, my favorite Pixar film of all time, which I've also covered briefly in his third. Uh, oh, there we go. In his thirty-day uh, movie challenge, yeah. that, that, because uh, it was day thirty, we were covering our favorite movie endings, and I figured, I said. I said, when I actually recorded it, I say he he did a great job with the editing. I, I say, I, I say there was a whole myriad of options I could have. I could have had I could have had that iconic climax in The Lion King, Simba, mm -hmm. top of Pride Rock, the music yes. at that point. I mean, I mean that scene in particular is one of those once in a generation moments as far as storytelling is concerned, in yes. my eyes anyway. <laughs> I say, seems yeah. like that do not come around every day, but when they do, they hit you. Mwah, chef's kiss. Need yes. I say more beyond that? <laughs> but that's about me. In the end, in the end, I, I in the end, I had to go for Inside Out because, as I mean, because because like I said, then it was it was a film that tackled mental health issues. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, if you look at the deeper picture, one of the few animated movies to really do so. Yeah. 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 But then once that romantic scene is out of the way, um, Lady is starting to question Tramp's act, uh, some of uh, Tramp's activities. Mm -hmm. And then and then they have a little and then they have a little uh, chase and then and then uh, oh boy, Lady ends up being caught by the dog catcher that we saw early on in the film and yeah. she's the one that ends up in the uh, heading to the dog pound. So you could say there, it's a very, that's a very clever case of subverting one's expectations because yeah. you think to yourself, oh, Trump's going to end up in the pound at some point. But uh, yeah. no, it's actually Lady. Lady. Lady ends up, yeah. Yeah. But, and then what occurs is a very... <laughs> yeah. But, but that, <laughs> one but, of those... But this, yeah, this begs the question though. Why, is La why was Lady the one that was caught when A, she has a collar and B, she's already licensed? Why was she the one that got caught? I know it's for plot convenience, but yeah, come on. I need there, to visualize the the exact scene. Maybe there's maybe Tramp runs away and leaves her. I don't know. Does, yeah. does he maybe do a bolt and, and do a yeah. runner? Or... Um, maybe goes to, maybe goes too far ahead for all we know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, but yeah, like you were about to say. Oh boy, that dog pound scene. I don't know why. I don't know what my mum was smoking back when she first saw this film, but she laughs at this scene. She laughs at them all howling in a sort of harmony, and I'm like... I think she's just laughing at the fact that they're all howling together, but then... Uh, it's a, I don't know the exact name of the tune that they're howling, but it's very melancholic, and it sticks with me. Now that yeah. I'm thinking about the scene, it sticks with me. I'm like, ah, ah. And then you get the extreme close-ups of some of the puppies just sort of in cages. Again, I'm a recent dog owner. And that, yeah. that scene just uh, put me which, in a, which, a bad which, spot. Yeah, which begs, which, begs the quest, which begs the question, folks, I ha this, is this is legitimate how I've typed it in my notes. Could this scene be any more depressing? Yes. That I'm just picturing that that one very very well animated. I will say the close ups of the the puppies <laughs> yeah. in captivity, especially that one that's sort of squeezed in between the yeah. bars. I think crying. I'm like ah. Even yeah. as a kid, I never liked it. In fact, I want to say it maybe traumatized me. It actually stopped me from watching the film for a good number of years. I want to oh. say probably until. <laughs> Disney Plus came about and I decided to binge all the Disney movies. That's yeah. when I finally watched, rewatched it for like maybe about 10, 15 years. It's a yeah. very, very tough scene to get through. But then we get, we, a, get, we get introduced to the rest of the, um, uh, the pound gang. We, so we, mm -hmm. We've seen Peg already. We've seen um, uh, yeah. Bull. Bull, mm-hmm. Um, the rest of the um, so the rest of the gang, you've got, you've got um, the Mexican stereotype. Oh yeah, the the pick uh, the pick and eat. Uh, no, 
the chihuahua the chihuahua yeah you've, yeah you've got a chihuahua there you've got um one that appears to be uh, uh maybe uh let's see uh, Oh, d- um, uh, uh, Daxia, how you pronounce that? D A C H S I E. Uh, that da- ah, dash, yeah, the, the, the dash, dash the, yeah, you've got the you've got a chihuahua there, you've got a dash hound, you've got peg, you've got bull. Are there any, are there any other dogs? In, are there any other, are there any other ones there? I feel there? Like there's one more, but I doesn't really have much of a, an impact in the scene. He's just yeah. there to sort of join the choir. Yeah. Um, oh, that that's the one. It's, um, it's a sort of brown uh, one. Uh, Bozoi. B-O-R-Z-O-I. Um, it uh, speaks with a Russian accent voiced by Alan Reed. I thought you were going to say Alan Rickman there. I'm like, oh, Christ. <laughs> Alan Rickman's first film. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, yeah, that's... I say, I say, I say that, that's, the, uh, that's the that's the Dog Pound gang. Um, and this... We mentioned earlier that... Um, that that um, the tramp is a bit, a bit of a ladies' man. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. L- Peg tells Lady about all this. Mm-hmm. And this is where we get the song "He's a Tramp," mm-hmm. which all but confirms that. Yeah, <laughs> but interesting. There's a, there's a uh, interesting little thing regarding that. Uh, the um, there's a, so we know Peggy Lee did the um, did the songs, but mm-hmm. interestingly, there was interestingly she actually filed a lawsuit against Disney regarding this. Um, Why? Does it look similar? Have they sort of based the character's look on Peggy Lee? Uh, not necess- Not. Ne- I don't think that's what it is. Um, it's it's more the f- it's more the fact that the lawsuit was filed because she didn't get enough. She didn't get the credit she felt that she deserved for her contributions towards the film. Right. Okay. I mean, it is pretty much her film, I guess. She is sort of carrying the yeah. film with her songs. Yeah. I think, I think, so her songs, she voices Peg, she voices Lady. Mm-hmm. I think, I think, I think it's, inc- I think it's amazing that she ended up having to mm-hmm. uh, file a, lo- file a oh, lawsuit regarding it. I guess maybe that was probably at the, the peak of women in film not being paid as much, um, yeah. or just women in general not getting paid as much for their work. Yeah. But um, but, but in the in the end, in the end, she did. In the end, uh, the lawsuit was. In the end, the lawsuit was settled, and um, and uh, she, she's now getting the credit that she uh, she deserves today. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Um. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, in Lady's case, she doesn't stay in the pound for long, so yeah. she's, she's able to get back home. And then we get to the climax of the film. Yep. And of course, that rat we saw at the start, the rat's back. Comes back. And ready to cause some more carnage. And yep. the, the music, the lighting, the music and lighting, especially during this point in the film, just... Mm-hmm incredible yeah because because not only because not only do you have because not only do you have it at night the room mm. i said the room that uh, the baby's in very dark yeah. and then you just and then you just occasionally see the uh, the flashes of lightning mm-hmm. and the rat's eyes glowing that's very unsettling <laughs> yeah <laughs> And it's very much like Ratkin's transformation in Basil the Great Mouse Detective. Oh yes, I was like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call that part unsettling. I would, I, said, I mean, for, I mean, for me, watching that transformation, I mean, yes, it is pretty terrifying mm-hmm. just to see him just 
be completely yeah. unhinged. Yeah. But if anything, it's actually a very cool sequence because because mm-hmm. that's because of that scene set entirely in like Big Ben. The mm-hmm. I think the the music just adding to that whole yeah. sense that this is the climax of the film. This is going to be the showdown. Yeah. Am I right in saying that was maybe the first time Disney experimented with computer-generated effects? It was one, it it was one of the first. It mm-hmm. was one of the first films that they did to um to implement that sort of it's like and 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 that's the thing. The fact that they managed to use computer animation for that scene mm-hmm. and it's still effectively hand drawn. That's the thing with the, that's the thing with this sort of style of animation. It's effectively timeless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, but then lady manages to. But then lady manages to get Tramp to effectively kill the rats. Yes. <laughs> so they, so it's, so it's just it's just the the pace of that part of the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tramp trying to hunt down. And then you and then you hear the and then you hear the rat squeaking, yeah. And then and then tra- and then Tramp does my the Tramp kills the rat at the expense of um, knocking the cradle over, waking the baby up, and Aunt Sarah in the process. Yeah. <laughs> and then we see, and it's and it's at this point where it's it's we actually see it officially confirmed that Aunt Sarah officially hates dogs. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, puts puts lady uh, into the In coast. Yeah, um, and and then just shoes tramp a, into a, a closet. Next scene, the dog pound is called, and tramp is going to be transported to the pound, which um, which was hint which was hinted at, and uh, there's one particular point in the the dog pound scene that was hint that was hinted at where. Um, the, the strays, they, uh, they go through that back door. They ain't coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, but then we, but then we get sort of like a, an encore climax, if you will, where, um, where Lady gets Jock and Trusty to try and hunt down this carriage that's got Tramp mm-hmm. in it. Yep. And yeah. it's, it's, uh, but but it's the whole but it's the whole point the whole thing um, uh, straight to um, yeah I say uh, because because uh, uh, what what are the notes I've got here it's one of the last notes that I've uh, managed to uh, type up uh, straight to assumptions uh, that they that. Uh, the, the Aunt Sarah is led is straight to us straight to the assumption of um, that uh, the lady. And, yes, the dogs were the ones that uh, caused all the trouble, especially Tramp. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's Lady once again that get that gets the blame when it's actually Tramp that should be mm-hmm. getting the credit for killing the rat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, but then what? But then what appears to be? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's plot convenience or not. But um, Trusty ends up a, what what appears to be able to get his uh, sense of smell back, and they're mm-hmm. able to. Um, Trusty and um, Jock are able to hunt down the carriage that's got Tramp in it. Uh, the carriage um, falls on its side, trapping Trusty underneath. Yeah. Now, of course, back now, of course, back day, and you have you've, I say, watching all the the Disney films back then, you just when you see a scene like that, you're just like, oh no, they've oh no, they've killed off another character. Mm-hmm. But uh, mercifully, he's okay, albeit with a bandaged up leg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and we've and we've come full circle. We've come full yeah. circle with the final scene where Tramp becomes a member of the Darling household. Uh, we see. We see, um, we see the uh, we see the baby. Uh, uh, I'm I'm led to assume that the baby is actually uh, called Junior. I'm, 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 I might I might I might be wrong. 
But um, what, the but, baby that looks like Trump? Uh, no, um, no, the uh, the 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 baby. baby. Oh, all right, oh, the actual baby. Right, yeah. okay, the human baby. Yes. I think, I think, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm led to assume he's called Junior, but uh, I, I might be wrong on that one. But yeah, um, but, yeah, but uh, what what's led what I believe is meant to be like the next Christmas, mm-hmm. which which effectively takes which is effectively uh, like I say it's all come full circle. Um, yep. The fact that all this took place over the course of a year, yeah, and um, you've got you've got four puppies, three that look like three that look like Lady, and one that looks like um, Tramp. Oh. Yeah, it's. Um, I say it's uh, I say fantastic to see that uh, everything's come full circle. Um, try, trying to get a family photo together, a uh, bit too much of the um, flash photography smoke. Yes, very playing, play, parading uh, the technology at the time. Uh, yeah, because of because of course the because of course the film was set in like 1909, mm-hmm. but uh, but they do manage to get a photo together and. Uh, and trusty, uh, this is something else that was also hinted at uh, early on in the film, where you've got the um, uh, what is it? Uh, tr- uh, trusty tr- telling um, lady about mm-hmm. his his uh, his uh, old, uh, relu- old, uh, old reliable old reliable old reliable yeah yeah <laughs> that's it and and trust and trusty. Um, and Trusty asks that same question that we heard earlier to um, the lady puppies, mm-hmm. and and they say no, we haven't heard about this. And trust and trust these eyes, effective <laughs> effectively. I've, I've used as I as I people will have heard me use this uh, term on a number of occasions. Um, trust these eyes light up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, oh and, yes, and yes, yes, that one, that, reliable. <laughs> that one was planned. That one was planned, folks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it is, it is, it is called old reliable. Um, in yeah. the um, in the uh, in the cast description, yeah. So yeah, I was right about that one. Yeah, um, a, fr- a fresh mm. audience to tell um stories about old reliable and. We and then we finish with the same uh, Christmas song that was used in the opening scene, oh. which mm-hmm. which further ties into everything coming full circle. Mm-hmm. And there we go. That is the end of Lady and the Tramp. Yeah. Again, very good. It's a classic for a reason. Absolutely. And I say, and I say it's 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 def it's definitely one of those um, definitely one of those must watch films mm-hmm. for uh, for Valentine's Day. It was actually in the. Um, so like a Valentine's Day collection that Disney Plus had um, in the build-up mm-hmm. to Valentine's Day. Um, mm-hmm. so I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure they had Splash in there as well. They had mean, Up. <laughs> I remember Up being at it, which is yes. strange, considering how uh, that and, relationship and, comes with. I was about to say, an interesting choice given the opening scene. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um. but hey, but hey. Uh, so now... Um, this is the f- this is the fun part. Uh, say, uh, the, the scores. Yes. Now, um, I say now, now when it's the two of us, especially, we do try and strike. We do try and strike a balance mm-hmm. as far as the uh, the scores are concerned. Because yeah. I mean, if if I have if I have a score and his is lower or higher, I can I can make the uh, adjustments accordingly. Adjustments. Yeah. Yes. So. So I say, I say, um, so I've got my, I've got the initial score in front of me, mm-hmm. but the initial overall score. Yeah. Uh, so the story I gave, so the story for me, I gave a nine. I say, just it I, um, I say it's, it's really, it's really well done. But say, but like I said, there are, there are a couple, there are a couple of um, plot points that um, a little bit that I feel were just put in there just for plot convenience, like the. Uh, like the scene with lady going to the pound, like like I like I mentioned, yeah. I say, mm-hmm. I say, it's, it's, it's like a couple of issues like that that stop me from giving it uh, a ten. And we, and uh, as we've seen previously, you you don't normally give out tens, but no, but when, no. but when you do, <laughs> there must be there must be something yeah. that, that yeah. gives it a ten. Um, 
what did I give it? I gave it, I gave it a seven overall. A seven. Uh, for, uh, the story. Um. So again, it's the problematic elements. It's just the the stereotypes. Yeah. It's not just the Siamese cats. There's yeah. also the Scottish stereotypes. Uh, we sort of just mm. bypass the the Mexican stereotype as well in the pound. Um. And as you said, the plot. Uh, conveniences and what have you yeah um so yeah but again mm-hmm. like i said the chemistry between the two main leads is strong yeah. and at the end of the day that's what the film is mm-hmm. about so yeah a seven <clears throat> yeah which then t- which then moves us swiftly on to the characters which i also gave a nine i say the only reason that stops me from the only reason i've stopped at giving it a 10 is because like you've mentioned the stereotypes and especially mm-hmm. the siamese cats yeah, um, I I also gave the characters a nine. Again, this was when I believe Disney perfected the sort of main relationship. They weren't really that strong up until this point. The weakest element of Cinderella and Snow White, as I said, is that yeah. main relationship. Um, whereas Lady in the Tramp, it's called Lady in the Tramp, and the relationship between those two characters is very mm-hmm. strong. Uh, the rest of the characters that surround the film are also very memorable. I like the fact that we don't really see much of the cup, the main couple's face. It's sort of like that traditional, sort of like Tom yeah. and Jerry thing where the human yes. characters, you only see the legs of. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah, so that's a valid um, point. Yeah. So yes, I'd, I'd give the, the characters again uh, a 10, uh, sorry, a 9, <laughs> uh, just for the main relationship. Um, yeah. Again, as you said, stereotypes and what have yeah. you. I say, I say the stereotypes are what stops are what stopping us from giving it mm-hmm. a ten. The visuals, uh, I also I say visuals another nine for me as well. Um, I say then I say it for me it's mainly the dog pound scene that stops it from a uh, uh, stops me from giving the um, giving the visuals a ten. But that's that's just me. What what is that about the pound scene in terms of animation say, that you don't like? Uh, well, well, it's not necessarily the animation side of things. It's, it's just more. It's just more the visuals that it. I say it just. It just felt. It just felt it was a bit too. It. It just felt it was a bit too depressing. Yeah, uh, f- uh, for me. But I guess what you mean. But um, right. but 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 like I mentioned earlier, the, the visuals, especially with that that climax of the, of Tramp um, killing mm-hmm. right there. I said the the dark room, the glowing of the um, mm-hmm. the rat eyes, and the the occasional flashes of lightning. Yeah, and and then I said, of course, the I said the uh, the eye gl- uh, the glittering eyes of um, mm-hmm. the Bella Note yeah. scene. Mm-hmm. I say, there was a lot to love as far as the visuals are concerned, but I say, it was yeah. it was just it was just the whole presentation of the dog pounds. It was just the whole pr- presentation of the dog pound scene. It just felt. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I like how the dog pound scene was presented, but it was just yeah. It just it, there was just something about it that just didn't sit right with me. Yeah, I get. I, I I guess I kind of get what you mean then. So you've convinced me to also give the animation a nine. I did have the that's a, a, a cliche for me. I'm giving all these films a ten in terms of animation, but um, no, I'd I'd give it a nine as well, just because, as you said, those close-ups of the puppies in particular and the dog pound yeah. seems seen very, very realistic. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I guess that means that the animation at that point is very, very good. But if almost, you're a dog lover, I think, I think, uh, it almost, will put you off. almost too good. If Aye, that makes kind sense. of uncanny valley. We'll yeah, say, kind of. Uh, I say, well, well, that, well, there's a first, folks. I might, I might convince him to change his score. <laughs> yeah, oh, yep. first time for everything, I guess. But, <laughs> um, I say, oh, I say, but, uh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, soundtrack. Uh, this one, shock. This one there, another nine, folks. Um, yeah. Um, I say, again, we've already touched on the whole Siamese mm-hmm. fiasco, but um, yeah. Uh, overall, the rest, of the, the rest of the soundtrack is fantastic. I say the score. I say the songs mm-hmm. really well done. Siamese song aside, just. Yeah, forget that even happened. But yeah, the um, but the rest, but the rest of the soundtrack, fantastic. I say, I say some of the, some of the um, some of the um, 
some of the points regarding the music score I've, I've already covered. Um, mm-hmm. like, I like, apart from, apart from the Siamese Cat song, I can't. I, this is this is the first time I can honestly say that I can't really fault the soundtrack because mm-hmm. there's a great balance between the score and the songs, which yeah. is which which for me, which me loving loving film soundtracks as much as I do. Mm-hmm trying to strike that fine balance between a great score and great mm-hmm. songs is it's it's something that's very difficult to do but when it's done right yeah that you barely notice it exactly of. you you mm-hmm. barely notice that there's any problems significant yeah. differences between between the two mm-hmm. i'm going to give the soundtrack an 8 um only because besides the the this is the night song. I forget what the actual title is. You, Bella you Note. A couple of times. Bella Note. Besides that song, and he's a tramp, and sadly the Siamese song as well. None of the other songs are all that memorable. Um, but like you said, the score is very good, and when the songs are have effort put into them, they are also very good. Just the Siamese song. I feel like if they'd just taken out that little Siamese sequence, I, I, probably would have been a 10 for most of the categories. Yeah. Um, that's like, that's like, I, I, say, I, say, I say that whole scene, yeah, I, I have to agree. I say, I, say we, I could have been looking at, um, I could have potentially been looking at possibly, a, possibly a perfect score. But mm-hmm. um, the legacy this film has We've we've mentioned it numerous times, so we'll mm-hmm. we'll we'll um let, we'll, we'll save our breath regarding that. <laughs> but if anything, as far as the legacy this film has, the score, I say, I say, I gave it a very generous eight. But I say, I say, mm-hmm. uh, but I say we've we've covered the rest of it, so we'll just we'll, we'll, yeah. we won't we won't. Uh, let's not go round in circles regarding that one again. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the um. I say we we did mention briefly that this film did have a live action remake, but it also had a direct to video sequel in two thousand and one, which focuses primarily on Scamp, who is um, Tramp's son. Mm-hmm. Now, now, of course, for like the more dedicated Disney fans, they know you know the Disney the Disney sequels don't exactly have the best track record, but. Mm-hmm. This is one of those Disney sequels that I remember watching a lot when I was younger, that Little Mermaid to Return of Jafar, and especially Aladdin and the King of Thieves. That's one of my personal mm-hmm. favourites. One of my personal favourites is 101 Dalmatians 2, Scamp's Adventure. I rewatched oh, that when yeah. I got my Disney Plus subscription. Yeah. It holds up very well. It's probably yeah. one of the better Disney sequels, I would say. Yeah. Um, but it's, 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 one, it's one of those Disney sequels that I haven't seen, but um, mm-hmm. but, uh, but uh, rest assured, when I cover the... When I cover the uh, Disney sequels and the director video stuff. I will definitely, uh, I will definitely cover that. Um, yeah. Um, I gave the legacy a seven myself. Um, again, there's not really anything that. Well, actually, no. There is obviously the iconic spaghetti eating scene, mm-hmm. and um, there's a lot of iconic elements in the movie. It's very strange out of how out of all the films that Disney have done a live action remake of they decided to pick Lady and the Tramp it's like that's that yeah. seemed very strange to me ever since I heard it was announced I was like right okay yeah it's one of the it's one of those I say I say it, it, it seems it seems to be one of it seems to be it seems to be the go-to thing for Disney right now that um mm. that they're that they're, that they're, that they're churning out these live action remakes yeah. um Every year, I mean, I mean, 2019 especially, we had four live action remakes. One of them was effect. One of them was a sequel. We had uh, Dumbo, which I've covered in a, rev- which I've uh, covered previously. Uh, Aladdin, which was my favorite remake of that year. The yeah. Lion King remake. Now, it exact same. It was exact same. <laughs> it was it was it was shot for shot. It was mm-hmm. shot for shot. It was probably the laziest one that they've done. And then, mm-hmm. and then we're left to Mistress of Evil, which I haven't seen yet. But uh, again, when I cover the live action films, I will get round to seeing watching the ones that I haven't seen yet. So, um, 
So taking the scores that you um, so taking the scores that uh, you had, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the score that you had uh, once I ran the calculations through, it was uh, a very respectable eighty-two percent, which, if we went by that, would have put it in between Alice in Wonderland and Dumbo. It would have actually put it eighth on the list. All right. Okay. But um. But say, but giving giving it an eighty percent, it would have uh, it would have just knocked it outside. It would have just barely squeezed into the top ten. Mm -hmm. But um, let's say the, so the scores the scores I get the scores I gave it was uh, an overall percentage of eighty eight percent, which is um, which is very respectable. But uh, what actually what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is if that's the case. Um, but but of, but of course, given the fact that I managed to convince you to move the um, uh, my rating down uh, the, from visuals, the visuals from, the visuals from a ten to a nine, that would have knocked it down to eighty yeah. percent. So so eighty eight plus eighty two divide that by uh, um, oh uh, wait, uh, divide that by two. Let's actually let's actually go for a, a middle park. Um, let's okay. go for a middle park score. Let's go for a middle park score. So there we go. That seems a bit more. Uh, yeah, that seems more reasonable. Yes. So so taking your eighty two percent, my eighty eight percent. I mean, I, 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 I could have easily knocked it down to eighty percent, but I, I'm feel I'm feeling generous. I kept it at eighty two yeah. percent. Uh, Combining our scores and halving it, we get a very overall between us a very respectable eighty-five percent, which puts it seventh on the list in between Nightmare Before Christmas and Alice in Wonderland. Seems like a nice placement. Yeah, because yeah. because Alice in Wonderland got eighty-three percent, and of course Nightmare yeah. Before Christmas got eighty-six uh, percent. Uh, but of course, bearing in mind, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas was uh, our first special episode yeah. mm -hmm. of uh, Kingdom of Isolation. But as far as the overall animated films are concerned, it is... One, two, three, four, five. Lady and the Tramp, sixth in the list of the um, animated films that we have covered so far, taking Nightmare Before Christmas out of the, equi out of the equation. But mm -hmm. still, sixth place... Out of all the films I'm that solid. I've covered so far, definitely not bad. Mm -hmm. Again, the film is very good, obviously. We've given it 80 ish percent. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a very likable film. Again, unless you're Asian <laughs> or Mexican. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, solid Disney film. Um, not, not in my top 10, but um, being a dog lover. It is one that I have a personal bias towards, I feel. Fair play. Um, yeah. yeah. So, that, so there we are, folks. That is, um, so, so of course, the last, the last, uh, I did it, I did this with uh, Peter Pan and I'll, and I'll do, uh, I'm going to start doing it here from, uh, from here on out. Would, would we recommend this film? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. it's a great watch for Valentine's Day and, and just throughout the year as well. Yeah. It's, it's, it is easily up there as one of the best films that Disney's actually um, mm -hmm. put to, put together. One of the best relationships they've, they've, they've put on screen, yeah. Easy, easily, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Easily, without a doubt. Yeah. And um, and that being said, uh, all that's left to do is get things is uh, on my end, especially get things sorted out for uh, getting my next guest on board to uh, cover Sleeping Beauty, which was uh, which uh, also filmed in uh, in widescreen. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I say, I say the the guest that I have for um, the guest that I have for Sleeping Beauty, they have a wealth of knowledge regarding Sleeping Beauty, especially the ballet that it's based mm -hmm. on. All right, okay, very interested to see that episode. Yeah, and uh, and of course, the best way to find out how that how that pans out as far as the scores are concerned is to tune in next time. But in the meantime. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a Dream Chaser like the two of us, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click that bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad so you don't miss anything I do 
on this channel. Uh, link to his Movies and Milk channel will be in the description and pinned at the top of the comments as well. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for joining me. I look forward to having you, uh, having you on board there next time, whenever that's going to be. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm I mean, looking forward I mean, to it. I mean, I mean, may very well be, may very well be the Aristocats for all we know. Might even be Robin Hood. Because I, um, I'm up for either. Yeah, as I because because I've got because I've, I've got the um, as I because I've got because I've got my guests uh, mm-hmm. sorted for um, for 101 Dalmatians, Sword in the Stone, and uh, Jungle Book. I've got my guests sorted out for that, and in 101 Dalmatians case especially, I have my backup already in place for that. Yeah. Um, as I like to say, I say he, I say he's, uh, he, I say Michael's been an absolute superstar getting these, uh, getting these thumbnails put together for this, um, for this series. But uh, that being said, um, all I have to say is uh, thanks, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you guys next time in the Kingdom of Isolation.